Hey wedding venues, in this video today I'm really excited. We are talking about celebrant led weddings and how that can drive more inquiries and more business to your wedding venue. So what you can expect from this short video is first of all I'm going to introduce the lovely Debbie in just a second. I'll also let you know who I am and we are going to take you through Debbie's six tips for driving business by using a celebrant led weddings. And then toward the end of the video we'll also show with you a link because Debbie has come up with a brilliant guide for you all covering everything we're going to talk about in this video and then right at the end I'm going to let you know about the fact that doors are closing to my online course in case you want to have another way to drive business to your venue so if that all sounds good hit the like button give us any comments in the boxes below we would love to hear from you so do let us know Debbie who are you introduce yourself Hi Kelly, um, I'm Debbie Skirm and I'm a celebrant and I'm a celebrant in Spain. I'm a former registrar so I know both sides of the coin and I'm here today to tell you how celebrant-led weddings can actually increase your revenue. And we love that in our groups and on my social media. All, um, all of our groups love to hear about that. So that's fantastic. Um, just in case we haven't met before, my name is Kelly Mortimer and I'm an international wedding venue consultant and wedding sales trainer. And I work with venues all over the world to dramatically increase their wedding bookings and wedding revenue. And I do that through a number of different channels. I've also worked for some of the big names in hospitality, such as Claridge's, Rosewood and Mandarin Oriental. But that's enough about me, that's boring. Let's get on to the good stuff. So um, I think to start off, Debbie, because often when I talk about this subject with venues, it's kind of all new. So could you maybe tell us what is celebrant-led weddings? What are we talking about? Okay, you have two sides to a marriage. You have the legal side where you contract the marriage. And that has to be done with the registrar, apart from in Scotland, we'll touch on that a bit later. Um, and then you have the, the ceremonial bit, and that can be led by a registrar or it can be led by a celebrant. So I'm here today to explain that a celebrant uh, has far more flexibility than the poor old registrar. Um, as a registrar, I was not able to have any kind of religious content. I was constrained by particular approved premises and a designated area, all these things. So I'd love to share with you how having a, a celebrant somebody just who can lead the ceremonial part can actually widen your client base and a widened client base means more revenue. <laughs> it absolutely does and I know when we were talking before I shared with you that when I did destination weddings for us this was really normal we did this all the time we called them symbolic ceremonies and couples would do the legal part on a different day or a different time or in a different country and then we hosted the symbolic ceremony which is kind of what you're talking about isn't it? Absolutely. Um, as a registrar, I could register births and deaths and marriages. And just as you wouldn't have the whole family piling into the register office to register a baby's birth and then have a, a celebration in the office, and you wouldn't do the same for a funeral either. So nowadays, more and more couples are separating the legality, the actual contracting of the marriage with the wedding ceremony and then having their ceremony wherever they want, like you say, on a beach, in a forest, in a garden. It's great. So, so um, really what we're talking about is a massive growing trend, and if venues are not on board with this, they are definitely losing business. So should we crack on with those six top tips for our venues? What's number one? Okay, well, first of all is separate the marriage from the wedding. Um, if you are an approved premises, if you've been licensed, as it were, by the council, you, you are an approved premises, absolutely fantastic, and that's really good. However, you will be having registrar-led weddings at your approved premises, and that means that you have um, lots of constraints because the registrar is constrained. The designated area, for example, and um, the designated area can be very limiting in that it's inside so yeah. you're missing out on all those wonderful outside weddings yeah. and so many venues have got incredible gardens and, and places where they could welcome people outside in teepees and marquees and yeah you need to celebrate <laughs> 
So tip number one is it's going to give you much more scope to use parts of your venue which currently cannot be licensed for a list of reasons. So that's the first thing, isn't it? It allows your couples to have more choice of, of location. Yes, encourage your couples to separate their marriage from their wedding. And in doing that, the wedding ceremony can then be wherever they like on your premises. Perfect. What is tip number two? Well, tip number two, as a registrar, I was not allowed to have any religious content at all yeah. with my ceremonies. Mm. So nowadays, we have so many mixed faith weddings. Yeah. We have so many people that perhaps want to have a little nod to religious content within their ceremony. And if you're only having registrar weddings, you then eliminate all of those potential clients. Yeah, so you can't even have a reading, can you, Debbie? You can't even have a reading, a spiritual no. reading. There's absolutely nothing. No, absolutely no religious references at all. Yeah. No religious music, nothing. Mm. So it can be very limiting. Definitely. Fab. Number three? Ah, number three. Okay, champagne wedding. <gasps> this is my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little known fact that within your designated area at your venue, you are not permitted to sell alcohol for an hour before the wedding. So, again, you need um, to think outside of the box here. You have clients that want to chill out. Perhaps they want to mix with their guests before the wedding. Um, a lot of couples like to see each other before the wedding, have photos before yeah. the wedding. And if you're a, a designated area, you can't, you'll have people standing around with cups of tea and that's not really the kind of atmosphere that we want. So again, the celebrant, the celebrant ceremony, you can have a little tipple, a little glass of champagne and you can welcome your champagne wedding. I love this one. Uh, what's number four for us, Debbie? Uh, well, outside weddings. Outside weddings is a huge trend, really big. Um, have a look on all the, the bridal websites, have a look on all the different reports and research, yeah. and more and more people want outside weddings. And I'm quite simply, if you don't have a celebrant, you haven't got an outside wedding ceremony. So yeah. it's a biggie, really big. Yeah, I definitely see this as a growing trend <clears throat> and I encourage all my venues to either have to build a gazebo or then have it licensed, which is obviously huge amounts of cost and time and effort. And because this trend in outdoor wedding ceremonies is just growing and growing and it, it isn't stopping. So as you say, if you then have a celebrant, you don't need to have the build the gazebo and have it registered and, and all of that, do you? No, absolutely not. You can have the ceremony wherever you want to. Uh, you can have boho weddings. Yeah. It opens up to all kinds of themed weddings. Fantastic. It really limits your imagination or the, <laughs> the celebrant's willingness to get stuck in. Yeah. No, I love it. Uh, what's your next tip for us? Well, with all the legalities out of the way, everybody relaxes. Yes. It's such a better vibe. Uh, people aren't worrying about fluffing their lines. What they're doing is they're relaxing, they're saying their own vows. A celebrant will write a bespoke wedding ceremony script for the couple. So they can include rituals, they can include any kind of content at all, and it becomes much more personal, much more emotional, and less stressful. Definitely. So less stressed clients, better reviews, better reviews, fantastic for the, for the venue. You're so right. And just picking back up on that about how personalised celebrants get with couples, it's much more than when you were a registrar, I would imagine, the time and effort that goes into those ceremonies. Oh, hugely. Um, a registrar, again, has certain legalities. They have to say contracting words, declaratory words. Basically, it's a template script where they fill in the names of the couple and they have a few personalised areas. But with a celebrant, you can start with a completely blank sheet of paper if you want to and have a 100% unique ceremony. And again, this is wonderful where you can bring in mixed faiths and a little nod to different traditions, hand fasting, sand ceremonies, the list is endless. <laughs> Amazing. So what's your last tip for us? Um, okay, well... Last tip really is, because you have a, a celebrant writing a completely bespoke ceremony, 
the celebrant is very, very aware because I'm a one man band, a one person band, and we're very aware that our last review, uh, well, our reputation is your reputation basically, we're only as good as the last review. So our customer service is usually a whole lot better than the registrar who is doing one ceremony after another after another with their templates. Um, we have to get it right, we rely on reviews, and so if we have a great reputation, the venue's gonna have a great reputation as well. Absolutely. Those tips are amazing. And I actually just want to share or ask you about something that one of my clients spoke to me about just this morning. And that was that um, in their um, county, the registrars are so busy and so booked that couples often can't actually get the dates and the times they want. And so for me, um, that, you know, having a celebrant led ceremony option is a way around that, isn't it? Absolutely right. As long as people do remember that they have got to contract their legal marriage at some stage, they can have their wedding ceremony whenever they want to. So they can liaise very closely with the venue, they can book the exact date that they want, and then they can pop into the register office and they can contract their marriage whenever the register office can fit them in. Absolutely right, yes. Yeah, so I've heard um, about venues where the registrar comes kind of first thing in the morning to the venue, they just sign, do the legalities, and then the celebrant hosts the kind of official ceremony later on in the afternoon. Do you see a lot of that? Yes, again, that really, really fits in with flexibility. So the, the couple can claim like a, a nine o'clock appointment with the registrar that nobody else wants, so they can contract their marriage just quietly in a little side office. Um, and then later on in the day when everybody's relaxed, when you've got into your, your wedding vibe, then you have your celebrant-led ceremony later on in the afternoon. So yes, you can take advantage there of uh, appointments with the registrar that nobody else would really want. Good point. Yeah, that works well. So where should our venues go to find uh, a celebrant if they don't know any? What, what, what's the best thing for them to do? You can go to two big main directories online. One of them is the Celebrant Collective, and the other one is the Celebrant Directory. And with the Celebrant Directory, they're really promoting venues at the moment, and they're offering um, a Celebrant-friendly badge to nice. venues that do want to promote Celebrant-led weddings. Nice. So these are huge directories with Celebrants actually from all over the world, um, but the Celebrant Directory is probably the biggest one in the UK. In fact, I would put myself out on a limb there and say it is the biggest <laughs> one in the UK. Perfect. So venue is really easy for you to go off and find a Celebrant to work with and to recommend to your couples. Well, that has been incredibly helpful and insightful, and I'm sure our venues have found that really useful. If you have any questions, do pop them in the comment boxes below, and Debbie and I will keep an eye after this video is um, popped out there, and we will make sure that we answer any of your questions. So thank you so much, Debbie. This has been brilliant. I really appreciate your time. You're so welcome. And guys, don't forget, if you are looking for ways to increase your bookings and increase your revenue, then one of the best ways is to come onto my six-week live online training course where I walk you step-by-step -step of how to increase your conversion rates and get more bookings for your venue. This is super popular. 100% of attendees would recommend this course and 100% of attendees feel confident to sell more weddings after this training. Doors are closing in a few days, 16th of May, just a few days away. So see the links below and do click for more information and to book on because we are about to close the doors. So that's it from us today. Thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you guys for watching. Any questions or comments, make sure you pop them in below and also hit the like button if you liked this video. 